What's up guys, it's Chris Majestic. I actually wanted to do a different type of video today. I'm actually on vacation traveling in Ghana and West Africa this week. So I don't really have anything to review today, but I did want to still give you guys a video. So what I want to do is start a Q&A series where I answer some of the most popular questions or some questions that people have. And since this is the very first one, I figured I'd just pick some questions that I get most often from different videos that I have on my channel. So in the future, I'll actually be answering questions from the previous Q&A video and from some other videos I have on the channel. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with some questions. All right, so Dan B says, is there a better solution that isn't cloud-based? So this is related to the Logitech Harmony Hub. I did do that video a long time ago. That was one of my first videos, so I didn't really get to answer as many questions as I would like to. But right now, the Logitech Harmony Hub is really the best option when it comes down to a smart remote um, that you can actually link with other devices to control your TV and other devices in the room. The fact that it links with things like the Amazon Echo and the Google Home, and you can actually speak to control devices in your room, you're really not gonna get that from any other remote out there. Even if you do spend a lot on some of the more advanced universal remotes, they don't really link well with some of the smart devices like smart speakers and things like that. So it's definitely the best option. All right, so Mace asks, how far do these devices need to be so they can be activated by the hub? So this is another question on the Logitech Harmony Hub, and he's asking how far devices in the room need to be from the hub. So this is, now if I could go back, I would redo the Logitech Harmony video because I didn't really answer this question too well, but people are a bit confused about how the hub works. So the hub works just like an infrared remote that you would have that comes with your device. Just like you get a TV remote or a receiver remote or a sound bar remote, you would point it at the device and aim it for volume control or whatever. The Logitech Harmony Hub works the exact same way. It's just sending out an IR signal in the room to those devices. So it does need to be in the same room as those devices. Now that being said, it is sending out a very powerful signal throughout the entire room that usually hits whatever device I have in the room. So you can almost set it anywhere out in the open and it's gonna control that device. It's not using Wi-Fi or RF or anything like that. It's just using infrared. So it does need to be at least somewhere within the line of sight of the device that you're trying to control. All right, so Johan Lopez, hopefully it's Johan. I'm guessing that's what it is. Hopefully I pronounced that right. I'm sorry if I didn't. Uh, he says, do I use Google Home or Alexa? So obviously a popular question. Um, I actually, <laughs> you're probably not gonna like this answer, but I do use both almost equally. And the reason for that is because I used Alexa for almost two years prior to using the Google Home since it didn't, since it wasn't out. Um, but I've had the Google Home for about a year now and me and my wife do use it a little bit more often now. I do very, very much so prefer asking the Google Home questions over Alexa. So we use Alexa to control a lot of the smart home devices in the house. I occasionally use the Google Home to do that. But when it comes to asking questions like, what time is this store closed? or something like that, I almost always use the Google Home because Alexa simply can't answer the question. Something like maybe asking about nutrition facts on certain foods, definitely the Google Home. So as far as which one I recommend, I'm definitely gonna say it's the Google Home, especially since recently Google has expanded the Google Home smart home compatibility. You can control so many other devices and connect it with a lot of different things, which you really couldn't do in the past because the Echo was so much better and it connected with a lot more devices. But now the Google Home is definitely more advanced and it does a lot more, so I recommend that over the Amazon Echo. All right, so the next question is from GE or BAD, <laughs> JORBAD maybe, I'm not sure, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, and he says, how's the input lag on budget projectors? So I do get this question a lot on some of the projector videos as well. So some people are more sensitive to input lag than others. Now, I don't game a lot, but I do have a cousin who games a lot. And he actually plays games that require you to have low input lag, things like Marvel versus Capcom and fighting games and things like that. And he plays on his budget projector all the time and he has no issues he has people come over hardcore gamers that play on the projector and they don't have any issues now his projector actually has an input lag of 50 milliseconds which is okay by input lag standards um, but if you're really sensitive to it and you really do want to go with the projector i would recommend something like the optima gt 1080 that projector is actually made for gamers they actually built that for gamers and it has an input lag of around 30 milliseconds, which is great. So if you need something that's faster than 30 milliseconds, then I probably wouldn't recommend a projector to you, but I can tell you that 30 or even 50 milliseconds is more than enough for most gamers. All right, so we have Neb the Web, and he's asking for me to recommend a good 1080p projector in 2017, as most of his material was 1080p Blu-ray. Um, this is definitely a popular question. So it really depends on your budget. So there are a lot of different options. If you're looking for something that's specifically 1080p, you can get something like the Epson 5040, depending on your budget. 
Um, but for that amount of money, you can go ahead and get the Optima for 4K. Um, but the Epson does do a better job with contrast and colors and things like that. So if you're looking for something that's specifically 1080p but has the capability to do some sort of 4K enhancement, I recommend the Epson 5040. Um, if you want to spend a little bit less money, you can look at some of the budget BenQ projectors. And if you want looking for something really cheap and you don't need a whole lot of features, um, then the BenQ 1070A I just reviewed like earlier this month. Um, you can check that out. That is a really good projector for the money. I would definitely recommend that if you don't need a whole lot of extra features like lens shift and things like that. So check that out as well. But I will post my recommendations in the video description so you can check out those links. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Again, if this is something that you want to see in the future, please let me know in the comment section and I'll actually have you post your questions for the next video in the comment section of this video so that I can answer some of those questions. I do appreciate you guys for watching the channel and I do try to interact with you as much as I can. If you found the video helpful, go ahead and mash that like button for me. Go ahead and make sure you share the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and make sure you hit that bell when you subscribe so that'll tell you whenever I post a new video so you can see everything as soon as I post it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.